What's going on everybody? Travis with RAC Garage and it's another gloomy, slightly rainy day in New England. Very humid. Got the Dano Roadster outside. Car cover and a cover just in case it starts raining. But I took headlight off, one of the headlights off because I didn't have these blasted. Double clutch where the car was. They blasted the headlights and the rear fenders and found some rust. My fault. I should have done that. A little bit here poking through so i need to replace that piece and then these are fine they can get put back on the car only this headlight so this headlight and the passenger rear fender where it comes down and meets up with the running board there's a little piece probably the same size as that i'm going to take care of these little pieces so i'll take the primer off make a piece so it fits on there scribe it out put it in punch it out weld it up and we're good that's about it so this is gonna be a fabrication video. I know it's been a bunch of pick videos and random parts videos and information videos. Let me know what you like. Uh, no, don't let me know what you like because I really don't care. I'm gonna do my own thing. Yeah, let's get right into it. Little update to the guys who always say nobody cares about your case. Shut it. People will care. So updated case. This is the only place I get to display things. Got my two blower covers there, uh, the Wyan 4x2 and my Hamilton 2x2. Eddie Meyer, pre-war water heated intake, block lettered. That cool airplane magneto I just got. Thank you, Chris. Wyan 2x2 high rise, a sharp 2x2, no generator provision. And I got a yeah, it's just a 38 McCullough intake. No, no biggie. And then Cyclone 3x2. That's what I chose to put in the case. I know there's a lot of reflection going on here. I put, I had a whole chrome section here. I kind of get rid of that because it's just cluttering up. I want to fill this with just mainly speed equipment and, uh, you know, fill the spaces in between. I want to get this case full of pre-war stuff eventually. But I do have some obviously post-war stuff like the Sharp and I believe the Cyclone post-war. I'm not too sure. I got to my buddy on that. The family, the Cyclone intakes, are still making stuff. So you make quick changes. I think once in a while they do a run of intake. I'm not sure on that one how old it is. And if they even made it pre-war, I'm blabbing on. Doesn't matter. That's the case as of now. I think it's pretty cool. All right, now to fabricate. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a piece that's very big, so I wanna be able to hold on to it. I'm gonna be wheeling this into shape. I think that uh, would be the best bet. It doesn't really need much shape on here. More form than anything, so I'm gonna wipe this down, DA it, because it's got a little bit of surface rust going on here, so hit it quick. With DA, that'll get rid of all that. And then we'll wheel away, cut it out. Cool. Got my trusty Bailey English wheel. This thing is a beast. I haven't used it much, but I do have a project that is coming up fairly quickly. Two of them, actually, um, that I, I want to make on the English wheel. I know I got my power hammer, and that's awesome. Um, I do have power hammer projects too that I honestly should have got to by now, but I know, I haven't. I'll tell you what they are. So I have a couple roof inserts to make, which is power hammer, and the English wheel projects I want to do. I have to make a 36 Cabriolet catwalk and a 36 Roadster catwalk. Coincidentally, two people reached out, well, the 36 Cabriolet he reached out a long time ago. Told him he's on the list, yeah, yeah, but I've just been, you know, my list is long. I've been busy. So finally, it's kind of, it's coming to his time. And uh, someone else reached out for a catwalk for a roadster. And coincidentally, I have the Dano Roadster back. So uh, it's a pretty good time to do that. I want to do that on the English wheel because I want to use it. I want to, you know, I love English wheeling. Not that I don't like hammering with my power hammer, but this is just relaxing. 
so I like to use the English wheel. So let's see what we got here. And you gotta give this a lot of shape in the wheel because when you bend it this way to form it over, you lose a lot of this contour. It almost goes away, which you know we kind of need because there's really not much here at all. Seems like it fits pretty good. Probably mark out where this needs to kind of be. Just sit on here. Go here. Go here. Mark it like that. Kind of a rough shape of what I need. So I'll cut that out and uh, start trimming, trimming, trimming until we get exactly what we need and then we'll cut it in. We can take the form out of it because we can always just put the form back in it. Taking shape away is really only done with tools. You can't take shape away with your hands. I don't think you can take shape away with your hands now that I think about it. it a little bit more wheelie action. It's gonna be tough because there's not much to hold on to. This might have to be planishing hammer right now because there's nothing to hold on to. This wheel's too big. Noisy's done. It's nice on there. Now I need to trim, 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 make it all nice. Who's that scribe? Got this piece fitting in there. Nice, nice. So now clean it up, then uh, start tacking it in. Rub the paint off to get some ground. tacked on. Now I need to planish it smooth with the tacks. File everything off, make sure it's all smooth, 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 nice, nice. Then uh, final weld and then do the same thing again. That feels nice. 
trick. It's going to get into that corner, though. Trying to grind more on the new thicker stuff because this is 18 gauge and this is probably, geez, now close to 16. No, I mean uh, 19, 20 gauge. That's a problem. Not a huge problem, but like, I have to get a screwdriver in there and try to pry this section out. Sorry, you can't see that. Pry this section out because it's too far in and this is in the way. If I have to, I'll resort to uh, taking the rivets out, but I'd rather not. Um, even if there's a little discrepancy here, a little bit of filler will fill that. Um, I just want to try to get most of that out. Yeah, that worked. Just hit a, hit a screwdriver in there on the side you wanted to bring up. Let's see. See how well it worked. That worked good enough for me. I want to weld it. That might even, you know, fill that little gap there anyway. So let's go ahead and buzz this in. Let me DA it first, see what it looks like, because it's kind of, you can't really tell. Say it looks pretty damn good to me. Buzz it in. Perfect, because it's time for lunch. So I can buzz this in. Let it cool while I'm eating. All right, metal finishing this off is going to be difficult. That did not weld as well as I thought it would because it tacked all right. This side, fine. All the way over here, for some reason. Maybe because a little pitted in the back. Ah, not fun. Let that cool off, let it relax. Hopefully it'll be easy. There it is. Patched up. Ready to get back on the car. Next, I think I'm gonna take the fender off, uh, the rear fender that has a little bit of that rust and fix that too. All right, so here's a passenger fender off of Dano's car. And I don't know how we didn't see that. Maybe I was just not, you know, I thought these were so perfect, I didn't want to dig into them. Should have dug into them, yeah. Um, I think what I'm gonna do here is take take the support out from behind it because uh, there's, there's gonna be r chunky rust in between there and it's just gonna rust again so cut the spot welds there take that piece out and uh, fix the sheet metal the freshly blasted and painted support back in there because that's all you really need it doesn't need to be super strong like crazy uh, even if there's some pitting on that that supports still fine um, so do that and, uh, you know, do a thing. More rust repair. That's all I seem to do is rust repair. But, you know, that's kind of what I get paid for. So I guess I can't complain. So I'm going to take the, uh, you know, paint off of the edge here. Try to find the spot holes, spot weld holes. <laughs> That is some thick 
take Phil forever. Holy crap. One, two, three, maybe four? Three, so I hope it's only three. I doubt it, but. Yucky. That's what's behind every single piece of sheet metal. I don't care how clean your car is, some of it looks like this. Gotta make a new bottom for this because it's, you know, not destroyed, but actually, I guess I might be able to get away with, I don't know, let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's gross. Okay. That's nasty, okay. Yeah, I'll just make a new bottom. So I got my buck that uh, Jacob helped me make. And we are going to Make it in two sections like I did before. I split it down the center here. And let's get cooking. First thing I need to do, I need a nine inch by five inch piece for the front. And then I think like a six inch by six inch for the side. Then we'll get the, uh, the plates screwed in place. Keep everything flat. We'll do one side at a time or one half at a time get it hammered into this shape and uh, trim it well together. this up this is the uh, I don't even know what I would call this thing it's not a sandwich plate it's kind of half of a sandwich plate kind of helps this area stay flat got Julie's holes up Right 
To it, but to do it, right? We'll track this up in the vise and we'll start hammering on it. because I drilled them with my hole punch. Well, I didn't drill them with a hole punch. I punched them out this time. And uh, I couldn't reach that middle one, so let me see. I think it's gonna be all right. Three seems more than enough. That's why I hate drills. Man, stupid mistake. I'm fine. But... Okay. Crisis averted. Uh, yeah, I should be ready. Right. Wait a second. How the? F uh, wait a second here. Why do I have like nothing over here? What's up with that? Why? 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 Doesn't sit on the edge, you jackass. Okay. Need to move it down a bunch. That's a bummer. This is where I had it. it needs to go like this. Which is where though? That's the thing. Now I don't know where the holes are. How did I do it last time? I think I just drilled holes and stuff and had a bunch of extra and just uh, kind of guessed. Cut the extra later. I forget how I did this because this is just wrong. Half an inch. Half an inch. So this goes like this. I don't know how to do this. I'm confused. Okay. Got it right this time. Now it's just a bunch of holes on the side here. Um, easily fixed. Still kind of sucks that I have to do it. Upset with myself. Making that stupid mistake. Not really stupid, I didn't know. Just didn't know. I forgot. Okay, sue me. There it is. That makes more sense. Okay, hammer time. I guess this over here, this guy over here, I will cut. All right, guys. Um, I got this chucked in here. I trimmed this guy. I scribed it. I'm going to take this one out, trim that guy, put it back in here, tack it, take it out, fully weld it together. But my old battery just died, and this one I popped it in, forgot to charge, it's at 4%. So, I don't have much time, but I appreciate you watching. That's all I got. I'll see you guys next video. Bye.